Ninja? What? What? What's this? It's a 2006 M6 with only 20,000 miles on it. It's, it's the <laughs> nicest one in existence. Let's see if it has an M engine. Oh. All right, upsy daisy and what? It's kind of wet in here. Oh. That's uh, a big oil leak, huh? Welcome to Hoovy's Garage, the dumbest automotive channel in all of YouTube. And I can't believe I'm saying this. So really, I can't believe I'm going to say a lot of things in this video. Uh, but let's start with the big one. This is my latest purchase. And it is a 2006 BMW M6. But not only is it that, it's also one of the nicest surviving ones probably in the world. It only has 20,000 miles on it, which is probably why it's still on the road and hasn't blown up yet. But when these first came out, I was working for the BMW. BMW dealer and I thought they were a little weird looking but still really cool with the 500 horsepower V10 and then I hated them because of how unreliable they were and how well the design sort of ruined the heritage of BMW but now this car is well almost 20 years old the design is over 20 years old and really I think it's time that we embrace the bangle butt we grab this bangle butt we caress it we kiss it mm, oh yes this big sumptuous bangle butt but before things get a little too hot in the garage with my new purchase, I'd like to thank War Thunder for sponsoring today's video. War Thunder is, unlike my M6, totally free to play with, but an equally epic military action game with land, sea, and air vehicles spanning an entire century. It's available on PC, PlayStation, Xbox, or Mac. Recently, a major update, La Royale, was released for War Thunder, a whole French fleet led by the battleship Paris. The legendary BTR-80 and SU-39 and many other novelties appeared in the game. Visual effects were significantly refined in this update, making the fights even more realistic. In War Thunder, there are many both renowned and prototype vehicles from the beginning of the 20th century through modern times. Each unit has its own features and feels different in its control. War Thunder includes vehicles from 10 nations. Vehicles in War Thunder include ground forces, aviation, and naval vessels. The unique feature being different types of vehicles can participate in single game sessions. For example, players can drive armored vehicles to gain control on the ground, while aircraft and helicopters to fly above in the clouds. In ocean maps, players may also take control of a small or large naval vessel fleet. And just like my hoopties, every single vehicle in War Thunder can be improved. You may unlock additional vehicles, armor, and special equipment. There are also various camouflages and unique skins for vehicles. You may make a vehicle even more individual with decals and decorative elements. War Thunder locations now span the entire globe, from Africa to Alaska. All the maps look atmospheric and realistic thanks to updated effects and realistic sound. Since there is always something new in War Thunder, players that stopped playing in the past may find themselves interested in discovering new features. So download War Thunder for free from the link in the description. All new players and those who haven't played War Thunder for over six months or more will receive 100,000 Silver Lions a week renting legendary ground German force vehicles, three premium vehicles as a gift forever, XP boosters, and a week of premium account and other bonuses. Hurry up and get all this from the link in the description. The season of German gifts will soon come to an end and probably be much more reliable than my German M6. Speaking of, uh, let's get back to whatever I was doing. Mm, oh yes, this big sumptuous bangle butt. Yes, we appreciate it for what it is. This car is so far ahead of its time in a couple of ways. First of all, the design. Chris Bangle completely transformed BMW, took it from its classic shape to, well, what it is sort of here, and a lot of people hated it. But now, all cars sort of look like this, and a lot of them look way, way worse. You thought BMWs were ugly from this era. Well, take a look at them now. God, ah! no, please. So I can't imagine me appreciating those designs uh, 20 years from now versus this one. Well, it does look pretty cool. The rear end, especially in this M6 form, uh, does look pretty attractive by itself in the coupe form. The convertibles, in my opinion, not so much. And the nose, well, it is very sharky and cool like the older BMWs. It is not offensive at all. I don't know why I was so offended by the design at the time. So probably because I couldn't afford it at the time. And then when I could afford it, I couldn't afford to maintain it. Uh, but now it is, I feel like, a classic. Uh, that's the other part of 
the bangle butt era of BMW, where they were so far ahead of its time, this car was seen as so unreliable, absolutely impossible to own with its major issues. Those include rod bearings that fail uh, spontaneously at any time. Basically every oil change, you need to take an oil analysis and see if you have metal shavings showing up in the oil and then do the rod bearings. That's several thousand dollars. And then there's the oil pump, the fancy Vanos pump that controls the top end as far as the variable valve lift and uh, takes oil through the engine. Those can fail as well, or the lines, and that can take out the engine as well, which would total out the car. And then of course there's the SMG automated manual transmission, uh, which was also unreliable and quite clunky, but I do think I have a solution for that. Now, this was seen as a very unreliable car at the time, but now look what we're dealing with here in 2023. Every car made, even the cheap ones, are so much more complicated than this thing that keeping this car running seems palatable now. It seems easy that it has only three or four major issues versus every new car now. Uh, so many gotchas, so many huge electronic issues, so many crazy things with emissions, with variable valve timing, with cylinder deactivation, where normal cars now are complete junk at 100,000 miles. So this car ahead of its time in more than one way. Now I assure you I wasn't looking for a BMW M6. This thing popped up on a wholesale site and I saw it and appreciated it for what it was. How many nice low mileage surviving M6s are there, especially in this color in this spec, which is also the same color as the M5 that I bought with the failed transmission that was quite a journey to fix. That one had 100,000 miles on it. This one 20,000 miles and it certainly shows. It is in gorgeous, incredible condition. I love the options on it, and it is an amazing driving car with one exception. But, I mean, just look at this thing. I paid $27,000 for it, which, I mean, may sound like a lot, but this car was almost $100,000 new, which, adjusting for inflation, is a lot, a lot more. And I get something with an exotic V10 under the hood, something that looks really cool and exotic, but obviously for a fraction of the price. Dodge Vipers with their V10s have skyrocketed in value. If you think of other V10s like the Porsche Guerrero GT, obviously not in the same league, uh, way rarer, way more special as far as being the last analog supercar. That's a V10 powered car, the Lexus LFA, another car in production numbers so, so, so low, but a lot of similarities to this where that's a, well, knock on the door of a million dollars. This thing, well, it's still a depreciated used car and I'm wondering how long that will be. I saw it, thought, that's an amazing value, and well, why not play with it? And with that, I'm gonna give you a tour of this amazing time capsule of an M6, take it for a drive and talk about, well, what I'm going to do with it. We'll also stop by the car ninjas and have him do an inspection, because uh, actually, this V10 BMW, the M5, that I had the same color, is the one that broke the car wizard, and he said, no more BMWs for me, and that's how I met the car ninja, so. That's why I'll go there. So I started this video loud and proud with the bangle butt. Let's get up close and personal to it. And yes, it does look very strange on a car that is otherwise very smooth and sharky. I mean, I guess it is sort of a tail, but it is very blocky where the rest of the car looks so smooth. So I understand why people thought it was weird. Nowadays, well, it looks kind of normal. So many sedans have this trait, uh, but obviously BMW got a lot of flack for it early on, and then they softened the bangle butt in the refresh of this body style with the 7 Series and the 6 Series, but this is the early iteration with the loud and proud bangle butt. And you can see it's aged well, I feel like. The back end, it looks pretty good. And the quad exhaust there, the bumper treatment, it does look very ahead of its time. This does not look like a car from 2006. The condition, although, certainly helps with that. Beautiful split spoke wheels. This one is optioned with the carbon fiber roof, which looks really sharp on this thing, obviously. And then we go to the nose, a pretty subtle gill treatment, unlike, say, the new Ferrari FF that I have in the garage, where that is way over the top. This one, a little more subtle and classy in that sense. Big old brakes. And then that front nose, does look really, really good in the M form. Maybe a little too soft in the regular 6 Series, but the M6 just looks absolutely perfect in my opinion. And those headlights, yeah, they are really sharp. Now, as far as defects, there are a few. One little ding right there, which I think can be popped out and buffed out the scuff there. I think there's one chip on this door, which I can touch up. Otherwise, it is an absolutely mint condition. So this car arrived about it sight unseen. It actually ran and drove. Uh, the engine doesn't seem like it's about to shell. The transmission shifts as it's supposed to. Uh, so that's really nice in that regard. 
come inside and it has the beautiful two-tone interior. It's making the BMW bings and bongs, of course, and I'll get inside and shut it up. But also this one weirdly has the burl wood, which I actually like. It looks kind of different. Uh, sadly though, it is the SMG transmission. Now, BMW did make manual M5s and M6s. They are very, very rare. There's a few hundred probably in the United States. I think they made three or 400 total, but you can convert them. And that is what I am looking into with this. I know there's a website that sells a kit to swap it. You have to source a transmission from a 6 Series or an M3 or M5 uh, to make it work because this one's a 7 speed and you would want a 6 speed. Uh, so I'm going to see if it's worth going to the trouble. But it is such a nice, well-preserved example that modifying it... Uh, that might be a bad idea. I don't know. We'll see. I did it with the 599 and absolutely love it. Well, I love it with the M6 and I have the back seat and an amazing V10. I imagine I would love it. But the quality of this car is another thing that is so over the top for the price point. I paid in the 20s for this thing and you have a low mileage, beautiful car with a leather trim dash, suede headliner. You saw the burl wood and the nice leather already. It's an amazing quality car. But the best part, obviously, is under the hood, or the worst part, depending on if you've owned one or not. Yeah, there is the incredible V10 engine with 500 horsepower. And as you can see, it is tidy and it is nice. And the previous owner was very finicky. He would sit and wait for this thing to warm up in the garage and get almost fully warmed up before he drove off because he was so worried about the rod bearings failing on this thing at 21,000 miles. Also, there's that oil line. There's no documentation of that being done for the Vanos, the other thing that can pop this motor. The one thing that has been done is the SMG pump. Now, this is like an automated manual transmission, a flappy pad gearbox where a computer controls the shift or you can do it yourself with the paddles or the shifter itself but at its principle it is a manual transmission it just has some gobbledygook attached to it controlled by hydraulics and well the hydraulic pump did fail on this one but it has been replaced so one of the big three has been done on this car but it's the only one really that I don't care about if I can manual swap this thing now we'll close the hood bye bye v10 500 horsepower and look, it does have nice fresh Michelins on it. And of course, the V10 does sound absolutely wonderful, even in stock form where it is a bit muffled. Yeah. But you do have to wait, obviously, for this thing to warm up a little bit. And even BMW has a little thing for you right here where this will change. As the car warms up, this moves. The red line and the yellow line will move all the way to almost 8,000 RPM. So we'll come back when it's warmed up here in a little bit and you can see how it has changed. But of course, the other famous thing with BMW was the iDrive, the very first big time infotainment system controlled by this knob down here. It was very clunky, it was not very intuitive. And here is the home screen. We can go to entertainment here and have it in the radio or navigation. The only neat part about it is this knob just doesn't spin forever. When you run out of room here on the menu, it actually stops spinning the knob. You can feel some kind of feedback. So it's pretty smart in that sense, but very, very not intuitive and distracting to have to go in uh, to like change a radio station versus having a preset or whatever simple way to do it. Uh, very clunky. And that is one criticism to this day, 20 years later, where iDrive, well, it's come a long way since then, car infotainment. But this, obviously among the first. The other nice thing about the M6 is you get this exotic look, but you do have a nice sized back seat here. So I can haul the kids, but also the bangle butt gives you a nice sized trunk. So actually two sets of golf clubs do fit in there. I'm waiting for it to warm up so I can rev it a little bit without destroying the engine. So I guess I am scared of it a little bit, uh, but then we'll take it for a drive and take it over to the car ninja to see what he thinks of this M6. All right, so it's off the pig there. It's warmed up a bit. I'll rev it some and you can hear it. Sounds good. <laughs> it sounds more like a Viper, like a refined Viper than say, a Lexus LFA, which screams like a Banshee, very high pitched, or a Carrera GT. So much more muscly and throatier. Oh, 
That sounds so good. Let's take it for a drive. Well, first impressions of the M6 is it feels much more like a grand touring car than a sporty M car. The seats, they are really nice, comfortable sport buckets with that extra support the BMW is known for when you pull out here uh, for your legs. A long-legged guy like me absolutely loves it, uh, but then you start driving it and it feels very, very relaxed. Of course, there's buttons down here to dial it all up and you pretty much have to do it. Right now, it's shifting very, very lazy, but you can adjust that with this button here and then you can turn up the suspension with this button here and then you can add power as far as throttle response with the power button there and then you have something a lot more sporty here as we get on the on-ramp wait till it gets straight here get into the throttle and that's too fast that's amazing power 500 horsepower in 2006 was really really something this was in the league of a lot of exotic cars back then for a fraction of the price and that's still the case with this thing it's just so darn impressive uh drawbacks clearly this transmission even in its fastest tightest mode it's a very clunky transmission on the highway what i did just right there it was made to do that very quick nice shifts but then you get into traffic, stop and go, that kind of stuff, and it can get very jerky, bucky. The computer, it, it's just an early primitive computer that's controlling the clutch and the shifts, and it's just not all that good. Also, mid-2000s common issue, the exhaust is very quiet on this thing. It is very subtle in that sense. I don't know if I would do anything about it since this car is so nice and factory, uh, but it is something that they figured out in later years making cars sound good when you accelerate or push a button as far as having an adjustable exhaust uh, versus in the mid-2000s where they were always so quiet but here we are cruising down the highway this doesn't feel like a 2006 at all i have a heads-up display i do have a lot of knobs instead of you know modern infotainment as far as the touch screen for that kind of stuff with the iDrive. but this does not feel like a 2006. Yeah, this car is a year away from being old enough to vote, and the only thing that shows it is this transmission right here, the SMG manual. And I'm just wondering, not that I've ever driven a manual M5 or M6, but, but what if? I know there's a swap kit for it. I know it can be done, but should it be done on a car that's this nice and this well-preserved? I don't know. It is still very, very fun as is, but uh, it can get very, very not fun on these uh, at the mechanic shop. So I am curious what the car ninja is going to have to say. <laughs> Maybe we'll do some preventative things if there's nothing to fix, but even though it has 21,000 miles, it's still an almost 18 year old BMW V10, very complicated machine. So I imagine there'll be something just due to age, not necessarily mileage. So. We'll see. Yeah, the Bentley and that horrible X6 M not an M's over there because we are at the Ninja's Lair. Oh, there's the heads up display kind of strobing there. But uh, yeah, kind of cool for 2006. Speaking of cool, Ninja. What? What? What's this? It's a 2006 M6 with only 20,000 miles on it. It's, it's the <laughs> nicest one in existence. Let's, let's see if it has an M engine. Oh, it, it has, unless they're doing non-M V10s, it, has, it hasn't been swapped like the X6. I haven't been screwed badly on this one as far as I know yet, wow. but I don't know if there's any metal shavings in the pan or any of that kind of stuff, you know? But that's an M engine, right? It's, it is, and it's super clean. Yep. Wow. Which, it looks so pretty with these covers off because it's individual throttle body. Yes. Like the... Uh, M3s and M5s. It sounds really good. Oh my god, it is, it is very low mileage. It's super cool. Yeah, yeah, just 21,000 miles. There's no sparkles. And the color, it's the same as the old M5 that you fixed for me. That's how we met, is the Car Ninja solved an issue with an SMG transmission swap on the M5 where the car wizard was just ready to light the thing on fire. And remember, yeah. you fixed it with a clothes hanger. Yep. And I also remember you hating this color. Uh, it's not, I don't know. It's beautiful. There's, well, there's the noise totally of the pump, right? Yes. So it has a new SMG pump, but I have no records of rod bearings. I have no records of uh, the, any of the Vano stuff. 
Well, the question is why the SMG failed so quick. And I thought this was kind of unusual, the burl wood. Isn't that weird? I kind of like it. I see in a 545 with that wood, but, but never an M6. Never an M6. No. Yeah, as far as the color combo and the options, it's it's really good. It's pretty custom. I mean, it's pretty high sticker build, I would say. Every bit of 90 grand or more. I don't have the window sticker. Yeah, the suede headliner. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. Looks like nobody said in here. Right. I mean, it's just a total time warp to back when I was working at Joseph BMW back in 2007. I was selling mostly the Chevys, <laughs> uh, Cadillacs, but the BMW store was right next door. And uh, this was King Kong. Beautiful. Beautiful. So, what is your opinion now, as the time has gone by, of the bangle butt, the uh, the hump here? <laughs> I hated the bangle butt at one point and what it represented. I will but... never be a fan of them. Really? I'm sorry. You don't like big butts? No. Hmm. Well, we found that out about Ninja. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, I have been thinking about manual swapping, and I know you've done a few aren't you like in the middle one right now yeah we'll do the e46 okay the e46 m3 so right there. oh so it gives a good comparison so that is the smg which looks like a very simple easy one right this very is the easy. controller right yep. here yep that's what shifts right here it's hydraulically there is a uh, sensor here to tell you what gear you are and then that's it so you and take that all one. off and on principle it's a manual transmission you put yes. in linkages yep and a clutch pedal and yep. There's a few mods in the car we have to do, but okay. very easy. I wonder, I know they make a kit for an M6. Really? Yeah. What do you think? We'll give it a try. There's like I'd love to. two or 300 in the United States, maybe M6 Ooh. manuals. There's more sedan, like M5s, but it's mm -hmm. very, very rare. And they sell for such a big premium. Like, I don't know if I put 10 grand into a conversion, if I'll get that back. I, because I really don't know. should. Based on the mileage, I, I think you should. Yeah, well, first of all, let's see if there's anything wrong with it, I guess, before yeah, I go on the deep end. If there's nothing to do, then I, I have to do something, right? Yeah, definitely. Pull it up there? Yep. All right, upsy daisy, and what? It's kind of wet in here. Oh. That's uh, a big oil leak, huh? Well, it could be the uh, seal ring from the oil right here. They did say they just changed the oil on it. Yeah. That could be it. But let me just take this cover out. And man, I never seen a complete car like this with all the shields and everything. This is amazing. That it's all still intact? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Very clean in the back. Yeah. Are the exhausts hammered in like that from the factory? Yes. Interesting. Yeah. I don't know why, but yeah. They're all like this. It is awfully quiet. I heard, yeah. We can fix that. <laughs> <laughs> no. In Kansas, we don't need that, but <laughs> no. it might be important for somebody else if I sell it down the road. Yes. All right, well, down the cover goes and see what I have there. 20,000 mile car, but it is a BMW V10, so. like a few less bolts than the SLR McLaren, huh? Yeah. yeah. To get that under tray off. Well, that's water and the air conditioning. And then we have more bracing, I guess, huh? Well. So what's, like, is this just? Yeah, this is a reinforcement plate. Okay. Okay, so. I'm seeing some right here by the transmission, which this one is going to be gone soon. If you decide to do the swap, yeah, there is some here by the accumulator. And the accumulator for the SMG. The, okay, so it's a hydraulic system, and that's yes. the uh, like the pressure hyzer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, to maintain pressure. Okay. Um, also, as a preventive maintenance, once everything is out, we can do the rear main seal. Okay. Because I see just a little bit of wet right here. So that should take care of all your problems. All right. So, but what is the big oil? You think it's just from a sloppy oil change? Could be, yeah. Because I'm not seeing anything else. All right. So again, some is from here and some is from your transmission. It never fails when you want to make a YouTube video that someone starts doing lawn work outside. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it looks like 
You're telling me I need to do the manual swap to fix a lot of its issues. I would, yeah. Hmm. So I was coming into this thinking I might do a manual swap, but now it seems like I need to do one because it's leaking from multiple places. And if I'm taking this all apart, I might as well make it better, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Put new clutch, yeah. new flywheel, new everything. Hmm. Okay. Well, down the rabbit hole I go with the M6. I never thought I would be appreciating this car as far as it being a new classic, something that would be a collector's item, especially back when these were hoopties. But how many are left like this? Nah, not very many. Yeah, so weird. It just means I'm getting older. We're getting old. Thank you so much for watching.